In this video, we will see the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Let's say we want to invest $200 at 7% annual interest. If we invest at 7%, then at the end of the first year, we will get back $200 plus 7% out of these $200. Now, to find what is 7% out of $200, we need to convert 7% into a decimal by dividing 7 by 100 and dropping the percent symbol. So, if we divide 7 by 100, we get 0 0.07. Then, to find what is the amount of interest, we will multiply it by 200 and we will get $14. Now, we want to see what happens to the amount of money if we keep $200 invested for 3 years in a row. If we use simple interest, then each year the interest will be calculated only on the principal. So, at the end of the first year, the total amount in the account will be 200 plus 14, which makes $214. At the end of the second year, we will have $214 plus another $14, which makes $228. As you see, the amount of interest in the second year is also $14, just like in the first year, because this is the amount of interest calculated out of the principal. And now, to find the total amount at the end of the third year, we will take 228 and add another $14, and this will be equal to $242. So, with simple interest, the same amount of interest is added each year, which represents the amount of interest calculated only on the principal. Now, below we have a formula that calculates the total amount after t years using simple interest. This formula is A equals P plus P times R and times T. A represents the total amount after T years. P represents the principal or the initial amount invested. R is the percentage as a decimal and T is the number of years. According to this formula, if we invest $200 at 7%, then after 3 years we will have the following. A equals 200 plus 200 times 0 0.07 and times 3 years. All this will be equal to $242. And this is the same amount calculated in the table above. And now let's talk about compound interest. With compound interest, the interest is calculated on the principal as well as on any accumulated interest. So, if we invest $200 at 7%, then at the end of the first year, we will have 200 plus 14, which makes $214. Now, to find the amount at the end of the second year, first we need to find what is 7%, out of $214. This amount represents the principal and the accumulated interest. So, 0 0.07 multiplied by 214 equals $14 and 98 cents. And now, the amount at the end of the second year will be 214 plus 14.98 which equals 228.98. And now to find the amount at the end of the third year, first we will find what is 7% out of $228.98. 0 0.07 multiplied by 228.98 is approximately $16.03. Then we will add 228.98 and 
16.03. Then the total amount will be 245.01. So now if we compare simple interest with compound interest, we see that with simple interest each year we add the same amount of interest. But with compound interest, each year the interest is calculated on the principal as well as on any accumulated interest. So at the end of the first year, the interest paid was $14, the second year 14.98, and the third year 16.03. Now below we have a formula that calculates the total amount after t years using compound interest paid once a year. The formula is A equals P times 1 plus R to the t's power. In this formula A represents the total amount, P represents the principal or the initial amount invested, R represents the percentage as a decimal, and T represents the number of years. So if we invest $200 at 7%, for 3 years using compound interest, then we will have A equals 200 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.07 to the power of 3. Then if we use a calculator, we will get that this amount is approximately $245.01. Now, the formula for the compound interest in this example is used when the compound interest is calculated once a year. However, the compound interest can be calculated more than once a year. For example, it can be calculated twice a year, every month, every day, or even more frequently. Here we have the formula that calculates the amount after t years using compound interest paid n times a year. This formula is A equals P times 1 plus R over n to the n times t power. In this formula, A represents the total amount, P represents the principal, R is the percentage as a decimal, n represents the number of times a year that the interest is paid, and this n is also called the number of compounding periods. Then t represents the number of years. Now let's say we invest $200 at 7% for 3 years. Then here to the right, I will calculate the total amount after 3 years when the compound interest is paid once a year. When the interest is paid once a year, then in this formula, n equals 1. Then I will have the following, $200 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 1 to the power of 1 times 3. So this is $200 at 7% for 3 years when the interest is paid once a year. This amount will be approximately $245.01. And this is exactly the same amount we saw in the example above. But now, what if the interest is paid semi-annually? This means that the interest is paid twice a year, and in this formula, n will be equal to 2. Then to the right, we will have the following. 200 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 2 to the power of 2 times 3. Then the total amount will be approximately $245.85. So if the interest is calculated more frequently, then the amount paid will increase. And now what if the interest is paid monthly? This means that in this formula n will be equal to 12 because the interest will be paid 12 times a year. Then we will have 200 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 12 to the 12 times 3. Then the total amount will be approximately $246.59. So again, the more frequently the interest is paid, 
the higher the amount is. But do you know that we can increase this n to infinity? In other words, we can find this amount when the interest is paid every instant. So let's see how this formula changes when n approaches infinity. So here again we have the formula a equals p times 1 plus r over n to the n t. To find the formula when n approaches infinity, we will make some changes to this formula. First, we will rewrite this fraction. In place of r over n, we will write 1 divided by n over r. These are equal because if we divide 1 by n over r, then this equals to 1 times r over n. And then 1 times r over n is r over n. So then we will have a equals p parenthesis 1 plus 1 over n divided by r to the n times t. Now in the next step we will use double parenthesis and we will write a equals p times double parenthesis 1 plus 1 over n divided by r, close one parenthesis to the n's power, and then close another parenthesis to the t's power. So here, if we apply the power rule, then n times t is n t. Now, in the next step, I will divide this n by r, and I will multiply t by r. Then a equals p, double parenthesis, 1 plus 1 over n over r, close one parenthesis, to the n over r, close the second parenthesis, to the t times r. So I divided n by r, and then I multiplied t by r. And now let's take a look at this expression that we have inside the parenthesis. In this expression, the denominator n over r is the same as the exponent n over r. And now here to the right, let's see how number e is defined. Number e can be calculated using the expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n's power as n approaches infinity. Notice that in both these expressions, the denominator is the same as the exponent. So here we have 1 plus 1 over the denominator that is the same as the exponent, and here we also have 1 plus 1 over the denominator that is the same as the exponent. And if here n approaches infinity, then n over r also approaches infinity. Then we can replace this expression with the number e. Then we will get the formula that represents the amount after t years using continuously compounded interest. And this formula is a equals p times e to the r times t. And now let's say we invest $200 at 7% for 3 years when the compound interest is continuously compounded. Again, this means that the number of times a year the interest is calculated approaches infinity. Then if we use the formula, we get a equals 200 multiplied by e to the 0 0.07 times 3. Then the total amount is approximately 246.74. So we can say that the largest amount is achieved when the interest is compounded continuously, although we should not expect this amount to be too much higher than when the interest is compounded several times a year. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a comment and thank you for watching.